Hey, nice to meet you. Hello, okay. how are you? How are you? Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Oh, teacher. Good evening everyone. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Uh, you look very nice. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. How are you feeling today? Excellent, teacher. Good, excellent. It's something excellent. really good. Amazing. Okay. Okay, we are going to start. Yesterday, we were talking about um, some grammar topics and we um, see an exercise. And we have the exercise number one. But now we are going to uh, answers or uh, complete the exercise. So I was telling that you have to read the verbs, the verb list that you have in the group of WhatsApp. So now we are going to change the verbs that we are going to see right now. Okay. Okay, this is the exercise. Now we are going to change the verbs. We have the verbs in present, so we are going to transform those verbs to past simple. So, in the first one, the young man, what is the verb uh, take in past? Uh, took. 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 Take. Right. Took. Good. Took out his wallet and Thank what you. is the pass of pay? To his wallet and pay. 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 Good. Then we have when Lucy go, what is the pass of go? When. 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 Right. When. To the interview, when. she. Where in past? War. 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 Good. Number three, War. we leave. What is the pass of leave? Uh, left. 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 left good we left, left the motorway and what is the pass of drive drop drop oh, right yes. number four thing the pass of thing so that's right oh. no the pass of meat, this is something easy. Yes. Right. Again, no. And what is the pass of B? In this case? Was. Because we are using the third person. Then we have right. The pass of right. Road. 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 Good. The pass of we. One. One. Good. This is really easy. The pass of put. 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 That's right. Put. The same. The pass of speak. Spoke. Spoken. Spoke. Okay, Smoke. then we have the pass of hair. Hair. That's right. And also this one, run. 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 And just change one a letter. Feel. Build. Build. Post. This is really, Post. really hard. Post. Cold. That's right. Break. Grow. Right, that's good. And the last one. Give. Game. 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 That's right. And those are the sentences. Remember, we have another exercise with 
this sentence. So you have to remember uh, some specific words, but we are going to develop that exercise uh, later on. So you have to remember this sentence and then we are going to complete with missing words. So it's uh, something like if you have um, paid enough attention to the sentence, but the exercise we are going to develop later. So we were talking about, in this case, uh, this is the topic for yesterday's session, the present perfect. We are talking the present perfect and the exercise is about the past, uh, simple past, because we already um, learned something about the simple past, but now we are going to continue with the present perfect. So we have here the structures for positive sentence, for negative sentence, and for the question form. Then we were studying uh, the uses and we have a specific uses, right? The first one is for something that started in the past and continues in the present. The second one, when we are talking about our experience to the present. And the number three is we often use the adverb ever to talk about experience up to the present. And we use never for the negative form. So we have the another one for something that happened in the past, but it is important in the present. So then we have have been and have gone. Let's see if you remember the uses. Have been, we use have been when. When we use has a, or have been. <laughs> when someone has returned ah when someone has gone and then returned good that's amazing and have gone when we use has or have gone when someone not returned Ah, okay. When someone has not returned, okay? Have been or has been is for someone that has gone to a place and returned. And uh, have or has gone is for someone that has not returned for a long time. So we are going to talk about present perfect with time adverbials. So we are going to continue with the topic. So we have here present perfect with time adverbials. So we have, um, we often use present perfect with adverbials which refer to the recent past. We are talking about recent past nor something like um, happened 50 years ago, maybe things that happened five years ago. That is a recent past. We use the present perfect, present perfect, that's just not writing the, the, the words, with adverbial, which refers, which refer to the recent past. And we have some examples. Let me see if I can do this. Okay, we have some examples and this is a recently just, and we have only just. Those are some examples. And we have sentences that we can uh, use with these words. Number one, scientists. Have recently discovered 
a new breed of a monkey. Then we have another one. We have just go back from our holidays. Then we have some words that we can use in these uh, cases. So I'm going to insert a table and we have so far until now up to again and now ever in a questions in questions and yet in questions no just give me a second <clears throat> Good evening. Okay, and we have a, it says there are adverbials which include the present. We can use it like in the present. And we have two sentences as examples. Have you ever seen a ghost? And where have you been up to now? Also, these uh, words, we can use it in uh, some uh, sentence, but there are just uh, some uh, examples. And then we have another one. Where have you been uh, up to now? That's the question. Then we have uh, an answer. Um, we have another question that it says, have you finished? Your homework yet? That's the question. And the answer is no so far. I've only done in my history. After a clause with the present perfect, we often use a clause with since to show when something starts in the past. So in this case, when we are using clauses, when we use with the present perfect, we often use a clause with scenes to show when something is started in the past. So we are going to use this clause or this word that is scenes to show this one to show when something is starting in the past. For example, I have worked here 
And we use the word since I left school. Okay, we have here our sentence with the have a structure of the present perfect or the past perfect. Um, and then we have the, um, the clause. So this word, uh, we can use it to say something that is start in the past. And we are going to make a, a sentence uh, talking about that event. So, eh, tenemos esto, ¿verdad? De eh, la estructura que ya estamos utilizando. Pero en este punto, cuando vamos a, a usar las cláusulas, eh, es cuando unimos dos oraciones, ¿verdad? Tenemos una oración que puede valerse por sí misma, pero le agregamos otra oración para darnos eh, ayuda, ¿verdad? O eh, agregar más información a lo que ya tenemos. En esta oración, I have worked here since I left school. Yo trabajé o yo he trabajado aquí desde que dejé la escuela. Since es para referirnos a algo que comenzó en el pasado, uniendo esas oraciones. Uh, the first one, uh, or the first part of the sentence, that we can just say it like that, and it's worth it, But we are going to add something to um, say about the time. Podemos decir solo la oración principal. I have worked here. He trabajado aquí. And that's right. There is no problem with that sentence. But we are going to add some information since I left school. So in that case, we are answering a question. When or since when? Entonces podemos utilizar la oración así simple, sola, de decir, he trabajado aquí. Pero también respondemos desde cuándo, en qué tiempo. Y we are going to say, since I left school, since I moved to that city, etc., etc. Then we have another one, and it says, I have been watching... that program every week and we are going to add the clubs since it is started. So in this case, we are saying that we are uh, watching a series um, for a long time. I have been watching, he estado viendo that program, ese programa. That's good. Uh, you have, a, or you are watching a series, or you are watching a program, or you are watching um, uh, something else. Uh, but since when? Since it start from the beginning. So, en la oración, he estado viendo ese programa todas las semanas. Mm? That's a good uh, sentence, right? Pero le agregamos desde que comenzó. It's like an uh, emphasis. Es como un énfasis del tiempo que llevamos haciendo una acción o de que algo ha comenzado. But you have to be careful. Be careful. Why? We don't use the present perfect with adverbials which refer to a finish past time. Estamos hablando de que utilizamos estos eh, uh, adverbials eh, para algo que ha comenzado en el pasado, but in this case, we are not going to use it, the uh, present perfect with adverbials that refer to a finish past time. No lo vamos a utilizar con adverbios eh, que se refieran a algo que ya terminó en el pasado. These are just for eh, adverbials that represent something that has started in the past, but maybe it is happening right now. So, vamos a utilizar estos adverbios solo para referirnos a cosas que comenzaron en el pasado, pero que todavía continúan que no han llegado a un final o que todavía están pasando en el presente. Si ya terminó y ese adverbial eh, representa un eh, final, 
we are not going to use it with present perfect. So we are going to write here, we don't use the present perfect with adverbials. which refer to a finished past time. Okay, we are not going to use it. So we have some examples of uh, the verbials. We have yesterday. We have last week, la semana pasada. Or we have last month, el mes pasado. Or we have last year, el año pasado. Also, we have in 2017 or uh, every year in 2016, in 2010, in 2009. Because it represents a time that has end. In it, we have another one when I was younger. When I was younger, we can use it with uh, the, those sentences because it represents a time that has end. Estas palabras representan eh, que algo ya terminó, que algo ya no va más. So we are not going to use it with the present perfect. So. We have some sentences to represent that the, um, that sign of be careful. So we have I said I have seen I have seen that film yesterday, and we are going to mark this one because that's not correct. That's an incorrect sentence. Then we have, we have just, a new car last week. When we were children, We have been to California. Okay, so, uh, but we can use the present perfect with adverbials, which refers to a time which is not yet finished. That is something that I, I was saying that we can use with adverbials that represents or refer to um, something that happens in the past, but uh, we can use it with adverbials that talk about the time that is happening uh, right now but it is not finished um, right now. So we have uh, some work of example, and we have today because it's happening. It's not uh, finished. This week, this month, and this year. 
now that I am 18, and we can use it with those um, adverbials, right? And we have some examples. Have you seen Helen today? And we have bought. a new car this week. Okay. Before we are going to, oh, someone is having troubles to enter the meeting. Okay. Um, before we are going to continue with the topic, we are going to develop the another exercise. Mm -hmm. So we have the exercise number two. Let's see. This is just for um, remember things. So don't worry. It's not a re something really, um, how can I say, a, a hard. So we, are going to do something and really uh, interesting. So we have some sentence uh, before that we were uh, changing the verbs to the um, to the past, right? So I am going to write the sentences, but we are not going to write it in the correct um, order. So I am going to write the sentence number one, and I will need help. For some, for someone that can say uh, the words that I am not writing, right? Number one, well, Lucy, and we have the spaces to the interview. She, her best suit. So let's see, Jimmy, can you remember the words that are missing in that sentence? No teacher, I'm sorry. No? Okay, no. someone that, that can remember the words that are missing? When Lucy went. Oh, that's right. When Lucy went to the interview, she she wore. That's right. Uh huh. Her best suit. Her best suit. Good. That's correct. So this exercise is like that. I am going to write the same sentences that you already had. And I am going to um, not writing some words and you have to say what words I am not writing, but we are going in another um, order. So number two, when they, the fire alarm, Everybody, 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 everybody what? Run. Run, that's good. Yeah. Out, Out of, of the building. The building. Yeah. Okay, but I am missing one word. What is that word? Hurt. Ah, hurt, good. And another one. The young man. What is the verb? Do you remember? Young man. Uh huh. Young man. What? Chuk. Chuk. Good. Chuk. Out. Oh, his out wallet. His wallet. Mm -hmm. um, 
and and pay, pay, the, bill. And pay the bill. Okay, that's good. Let's see. Last year, the company won. Wood. Ah, wood. That's good. Wood. New factory. A new, uh -huh, factor. a new factory. Which has cost me. Which? Which cost. Which cost? Uh huh. Of dollars. of dollars. Of dollars. That's good. Okay, number five. As soon as I won, I am going to Doris. Ah, okay. I won. Was. Um, no. No. I knew. Before. I knew. That's knew. good. I knew, knew. she was. Okay. Someone is special. Okay. Let's see. Number six. The nurse. What did the nurse? The nurse put. Ah, okay. The little boy in bed. Uh, and what did um, spoke. Spoke. spoke? Good. To him, to him softly. 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 Good. Let's see. When Jose. He's what? Broke. Broke. Oh. Ah, okay. Broke. Broke. His arm. The doctor. Arm. The doctor gave him. Hey. Gave him. Two weeks of work. Two weeks of work. Of work. Of work. Of work. Okay. That's good. That's good. Tolstoy. What? Wrote, oh wow. Some great novels. Mm -hmm. But he never mm -hmm. won. won a prize. Won. Okay, won a Nobel Prize. Okay, that's good. Number nine, almost done. I. I. My irregular oh. uh -huh. talk. Oh. Oh. The number one. Oh. I knew. I knew. knew. My irregular birth. My but irregular birth, but now, now I am not. I am sure. not sure. I am not sure. That's good. So let me, okay. And the last one. We. Left. Left. Uh, left. We left. Motorway. The, motorway. The motorway. The motorway. And uh, drove. drove. And drove. That's drove. good. For, For an, an hour. hour on quiet country roads. On quiet country roads. Okay, that's good. That's good, that's good. You did a really an amazing work. Okay. So we have the second um, exercise right here. But, okay. And we have, uh, and I have another exercises, but we are going to continue with the topic. And then we are going to develop the other exercises. So we are going to do it something like this. So don't worry. So we are going to see the present perfect continuous. Present perfect continuous. Okay, we have here. 
present perfect continuous. And what is this? So we are going to develop the topic and we are going to know, to know what is the a present perfect continuous. It says the present perfect continuous is formed with have, has, been, and the ing form of the verb. So it says it is formed with has or have been. That's the structure. And the ing form of the verb. So in this case, we are going to use the ing form of the verb. So we are, go are going to mark the structure. So we have has or have been plus the ing form of the verb. So we normally use the present perfect continuous to emphasize that something is continuing in the deep present para hacer un énfasis de que algo está continuando en el presente. That's the use of the present perfect continuous. We use it to emphasize, oh, emphasize that something is continuing in the present. Okay, and we have some examples. Let's see, okay. Oh. Okay, we have number one, she has been, we have the subject, that's the same uh, structure, has been, we have plus has or have been. Then we have the verb with the ing form. He has been living and we have the complement. In Liverpool, all her life. So I'm going to write right here the structure. We have the subject, plus, has, or have, been, plus, verb, the ing form of the verb, plus complement. And that's the a uh, structure. Right, this one that we are going to write in another column. I'm going to do it like this. Okay, that's the uh, structure for uh, this uh, present perfect continuous. Then we have another example. It's been raining. Oh, I forgot to change the color. It, it has, it has, in this case, it has been raining for hours. I'm tired out. I've been working all day. I have been working all day, just like you, I guess. They have been staying, they have been staying with us, with, with us since last week. So we have here our verbs with the ing form. We have raining, we have living, we have working. Tired. Working. 
And we have a staying. And uh, those are verbs with the ing form. And we have uh, also, we do not normally use the present perfect continuous with stated verbs. Mm, we use the present perfect simple instead. I've always been liking or like John. It, um, it exists some verbs that are called stated verbs. Hay unos verbos que se llaman eh, verbos estáticos. Eh, and we can use it with the present perfect continuous because it, it, they don't change their form. Ellos no cambian su forma, pero eh, that's another topic, right? So that's just a, a reminder of not using the stay verbs with the present perfect eh, tense. Then, we are uh, using the present perfect for uh, some things that happened in the past or started in the past. But what happened for the present perfect for future? Eh, hemos estado hablando, ¿verdad? De acciones que comenzaron en el pasado y de cosas que están pasando en este momento. Pero vamos a hablar sobre eh, us utilizar el present perfect for future, para el futuro. And then we have one exercise more will we have a uh, two tell me i have a question tell me in this case for the present perfect continuous mm -hmm. uh, we can use an adverbial um in the past to complete the the sentence for example in in this case um they had been staying with us since last week. Yes, you can use it like that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. You can use it because the first part of the sentence, en la primera parte de la oración, we are going to use the structure. Vamos a utilizar la estructura. Then the complement, en el complemento nosotros vamos a utilizar eh, eh, lo que nosotros necesitemos. But in this case, we can use it since because it's a clause is otra clausula que se le agrega a la oración. So then we are going to use the present perfect for future and we have some exercise and then we are going to uh, see something about the past simple or simple past that is just a feedback. Vamos a hacer una retroalimentación del tema del de simple past o el, el pasado simple, porque ya lo hemos visto. It, uh, it is about the verbs that you already have that are the, um, the regular and irregular verb. Son los verbos irregulares y los verbos regulares que ya vimos que están en pasado simple. Solo vamos a hacer un uh, feedback de ese tema. No nos vamos a detener mucho en eso. So, um, you are, we are going just to, to talk about the uses and so on. So, we are going to talk about the present perfect for future. So, let's see, and then we are going to develop some exercises. We have uh, like three or four exercises to do right now. So, we have present perfect. for future. Okay, we normally use the present uh, simple to talk about the future in clauses with before, after, until. It says that we use the present simple. Nosotros utilizamos el presente simple normalmente para hablar de cosas en el futuro. But in this case, we are going to um, see some examples in this case. I will, in this case is I will. Keep looking I find my book. So in this case he's saying that we can uh, use the uh, present perfect for future. So in this case we are going to use 
just the present simple. So in this case, we um, can use the present a uh, perfect to talk about the future, just to talk about the action that happened in the past and that um, are happening right now. But for future, we are going to use present simple. So, dice que no podemos utilizar, ¿verdad? Lo que es el presente perfecto, en este caso vamos a utilizar el presente simple para hablar del futuro, ya que el presente perfecto nos está ayudando a hablar de cosas que pasaron o que iniciaron en el pasado y que pasan en este momento. So, we have we have some uh, sentence. We have 10 sentences to work right now. We are going to complete the sentence like we did with the uh, simple past. Vamos a hacerlo igual así como lo hicimos con el simple past. But in this case, you have some adverbs. You have ever and never. Tenemos el ever y tenemos el never. We already uh, study the uses of ever and never with the present perfect. So, it says that never and ever go after, van, after, go after, have, or has, and before the past participle. So, ever and never go after, have and has, and before the past participle. Okay? We are going to develop the exercise. So, exercise. We have number one, Sophie and I So in this case, we are going to do it with the past participle, not a past simple. Each other. Since we were at school together. Number two, I play Number three, Elaine. Where I Be an actor for as long as I can remember. My uncle smoke. Cigarettes.
Okay, we have the 10 sentence right here. So the number one, Sophie and I know each other since we were at school together. And number two, I play tennis since I was eight years old. Number three, Elaine B in hospital three times this year. Number four, I want to be an actor for as long as I can remember. Um, number five, my uncle smoked 14 cigarettes a day for 40 years and he's a doctor. Number six, you have that suit for more than 10 years. It's in time to get a new one. Number seven, since he finished university, my brother worked in five different countries. Number eight, Serin watched that TV program every week since it started. Number nine, I never like bananas. I think they are, they are horrible. And number 10, what's the most interesting city to ever visit? Okay. ¿Qué vamos a hacer? Vamos a completar estas oraciones. We have the verb um, right there. Tenemos el verbo ahí entre paréntesis. Then we are going to use it the present perfect. Ok, vamos a utilizar el presente perfecto. And we know already that we are going to use the have or has um, with the verb in the third form. Vamos a utilizar el have, ¿verdad? En presente, el have o el has. Y vamos a utilizar el verbo, ¿verdad? En la tercera forma que nosotros tenemos en nuestro listado. So, we are going to develop this sentence, the, the exercise. So, you have uh, some uh, minutes to uh, read the sentence and uh, write the correct form of the verbs. And also, remember that ever and never go after has and has and before the past participle. That is the correct uh, form to write the never and ever. After, have and has and before the past participle. So we are going to do these sentences in present perfect, nor in a, um, um, no in a, just a simple present. Vamos a hacerlo en, el, en la estructura que ya estamos estudiando, no en presente simple, sino que en presente perfecto. So, you have, you have some time to do these sentences. We have like five minutes. I think it's enough time to end the sentence.
Teacher, tengo una pregunta. Tell me. On the number six, uh -huh. eh, el verbo es have. Entonces ahí sería you have had. That's correct. You have oh, had. Okay. Remember that in this case, uh, the have or has of the structure is like an auxiliary. Podemos tomarlo como un auxiliar eh, de eh, la estructura. So in this case, we have the structure that we are going to use the subject plus the have or has. And then the verb in this case, have is a verb. Eh, and we are going to eh, change the tense. So in this case, we have has had or have had. That's okay. Okay, so tomorrow we are going to see the correct uh, structure of the sentences and the verbs. And then we are going to do the other exercise, but now it's time to end the session. So we are going to um, have another exercise tomorrow. So now let's say goodbye and see you tomorrow. Have a really good night. See you tomorrow, teacher. See you tomorrow, teacher. Tomorrow. 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 Have a good night. Hi, teacher. Good night. Good night.